Tell me what happened in court today. Uh, well, actually, yesterday, uh, the Crown completed their application to have the statements of two main witnesses read into evidence by way of the Evidence Act, which means essentially that because the witnesses weren't coming, they wanted to read the statement into evidence without the witness actually being there. Um, so that was going on from last week. And essentially our argument was that the police have not really done enough to secure the presence of these witnesses. Mm -hmm. Because what they, the act really allows for is that all reasonable steps need to be taken before the judge can then decide whether or not the statement can go in. Um, there were some circumstances where it was clear that the police really didn't look for these witnesses. There are persons who are affiliated with the witnesses, their family members, um, place of address, and the police didn't check. Um, as it relates to one particular witness, from the very early stages we had indicated that um, we had some concerns about the identity of this witness. Not that the witness didn't exist per se, because I'm sure that there was a real person who had given that statement. Mm -hmm. But as to that person's identity is right. what we were trying to ascertain. Um, to no avail. A statement from a particular witness indicated that she had asked the witness about um, an identification card, some form of identity, and he says that he had lost it. Um, all of our checks throughout the trial proved that the witness had no birth certificate, the witness had no TRN. The witness was not on the voter's ID, voter's list anywhere. Um, the three schools that he indicated he attended, there is no record of that witness. There's no record of that person born on that day to those particular parents, which is really what the test would be. I am John Brown. My date of birth is X. Um, these are my parents. I have born and grew up in a particular area and there is no record of this person so the judge was really left to determine whether or not he wanted to accept the say so of this witness based on the fact that the police were saying they really had no fixed place of address for this witness so we couldn't find him and that is really what the case turned on um, yesterday and then today the judge just entered a formal verdict well instructed the jury to enter a formal verdict of, of not guilty so as far as this case is concerned, he has been found not guilty. No Your way it can come back. Murder. It's done. That's the end of the matter. Amazing. That's the end of it. After two years plus, this was what the prosecution had to offer. It, it seems like, you know, for all this time the man has been behind bars, that there must have been a great preponderance of evidence or some reason to hold him for all this time. Were you surprised that that was all they brought to the table? No, but I think we spoke about this before. I think you and I had a conversation about this before um, as to what, what the strength of the evidence against him in any of these cases. And I think at the time, um, you know, there was this sort of media frenzy about him being charged for something else, um, multiple murder charges, yep. uh, this sort of thing. And, and at the end of the day, he was only really charged for um, two counts of murder, two separate murders. And, and sometime later he was charged for the offense of attempting to pervert the course of justice mm -hmm. in relation to one of those, those murders. Um, from our opposition from day one was, was very clear. We didn't believe that they had any witnesses. We didn't believe that the police were investigating the matter properly. And in relation to the second, the second offense, it's really a circumstantial case. This the is the one that's still to be heard in the one that is, that, yeah. that is still pending. The, yeah. the, the Crown will not even be in a position to say that this person is, is really dead. Really? Absolutely. Can so, you explain that a little more? Yeah. Alright, the basis of that offence is um, a number of persons to include Adija Palmer um, beat somebody to death. There's no IC witness to the incident. So all the witness says is that he was in the company of this person. He ran, left the person there, and has not seen him since. That is the, the height of the Crown's case. There is no body. There is no DNA evidence. There is no video. There is no pictures. 
I think we had spoken about We heard about before. video, yes. camera there's, phones. There's, yeah. there's, there's none of that. There's none of that. What, uh, can you, I mean, I'm, I know I'm asking you to postulate, but can you sort of think as to why within the, the public's consciousness there was this sort of sense that very specific things were being discussed in terms of evidence, like the camera phone, you know, like the, the fact that these were, you know, there were all of these different incidents, there were all of these different witnesses? Right. Uh, when, when, when we made the bail application the last time, um, sorry, we looked at the issue of the police using the media to prejudice his status as a fit and proper candidate for bail. So, from the very outset, um, the police indicated that they had the murder on video. That's not so. Mm -hmm. We brought that to the attention of the judge. They then indicated that they had done some DNA sample testing and that it created a link between Adija Palmer and the murder. Mm -hmm. That is not so. Um, they then came and said that they had, um, I believe, some text messages, some sort of admission on his behalf via text messages. That is not so. And every time we went to court to make an application for bail for him, we heard about something new that they had that was going to be used to strengthen the Crown's case. And none of it has turned out to be true. We brought that to the attention of the judge. And they said, well, well, he has another murder case. So here it is. He's left with only one. Mm -hmm. None of what the prosecution has said is true. And we're of the view that he should be offered bail. Whether we make another application now or in the near future is, is something that he'll have to instruct us on. It's definitely an option at this stage. Can you comment a little bit on the fact that, you know, um, Vibes Cartel as, a, as an entertainer is not the only entertainer who has been jailed for long periods of time before any trial or before any, any bail hearing? Can you, can you comment on the, the justice system's uh, treatment of Entertainment from the from the point of when they are charged with a particular crime through to a situation like this? Um, he would be in custody now for almost three years, mm -hmm. I believe. In the ordinary course of things, you would expect that a person would be tried within about two years mm -hmm. because the matter would be at the preliminary inquiry stage uh, at the resident magistrate's court. It, it may very well spend somewhere between six or eight months at that stage. Um, it is then sent to the circuit court where he may very well spend another year before the matter is, is, is properly dealt with. There are circumstances where people spend up to four and five years without a trial for one reason or the other. But in this case, because we were of the view that what the police were doing to him was wrong, we push for an early trial. Now, he, it, it is somewhat of a special case because he had another charge pending. Mm -hmm. So the mere fact that he has been in custody for almost three years is not in and of itself excessive, in other words. But we were of the view that he needs to be tried quickly. And we think that in this case, um, even though people may form the view that it is still long, um, it, you know, we, our position was, look, you can take all the time you want to find whatever witnesses you want, but give us bail so you can go and make a living. Mm -hmm. You know, so that is so we're back. That's that's the position that we're back to here now, as it relates to this bail. 